here this, to this morning's worship service. We're so glad you all took the time out of your day to come and worship our Lord Spirit and the truth with us here at Malden this morning. If you are visiting with us this morning, we'd like you to know that you are our honored guest and you'll find a visitor card in the front of your pew we'd like for you to fill out. And we'd like you to come back each and every opportunity that you get. If you do not have a bulletin, they can be, they're located in the foyer outside on the table on the left as you leave the auditorium. And most of our announcements this morning will be coming out of that bulletin. Uh, so just a few things uh, before we get started this morning. Uh, we have uh, we have several uh, several service openings here at the church, uh, all the way from helping with the bulletins to signing up for meal uh, preparations uh, to preparing the Lord's Supper. Uh, before the services. So if you're interested in any of that, if you will see Miss Vicki. Uh, or Susan, uh, we will get you pointed into that direction. And service is always good. Whenever we can take time to serve the Lord, it's a good thing. Also, also we'd like to uh, remind everyone about our about our soup and sandwich uh, fellowship we're going to have here on Saturday, February 11th. It's going to start at four o'clock. We'll have food and games and. Playgrounds and great fellowship. So everyone who wants to come is welcome. Bring your neighbors, bring their kids too if you can. And that is about all we have for today on the announcements in this morning's worship service. Uh, Brother Dennis Tribe will be having our lesson this morning. Joel Foster will be leading us in our song service. Our scripture reading will be by Rusty Maddox. And our closing prayer will be by Brother Joe Mormon. And if you would, if you bow with me, we'll get started in service with open in prayer. Amen. Almighty God, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be the great and holy name. Dear Lord, we do come in prayer with joy in our hearts this morning. Thanking you, Father, for this opportunity that we have to gather here with our Christian brothers and sisters to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, to worship you without fear of persecution. We know, Lord, that it's not that way throughout the world. There are many who are unable to practice their faith. And we are thankful, Father, that in the United States we are able to do so. We're so thankful, Father, this morning to wear the name Christian. And as we wear the name Christian, Father, we do pray that as your children we would continue to grow in love and understanding of, of one another and of thy word. That we would continue to wake up and serve you, Father, each and every day. 
We know that through serving you, we'll serve others. And there's no better feeling for a Christian than to serve. We are thankful, Father, for your word and the truth that can be found in it. We're thankful for your church, both here in Malden and throughout the world. And we just pray, Father, at this time that you, your, the truth will always be taught in your church. We are thankful, Father, again for this day, and we're thankful for this worship time that we have. We're thankful for Brother Dennis. As he brings us our lesson this morning, we pray that he would have a, a ready recollection of the things that he has studied and that he will and that he has prepared, and that he will be able to deliver them in a way unto us that we will understand them, and that we may be able to apply them that to our lives. Pray, Father, that we would continue to study, and that we would continue to proclaim your gospel to those that we come in contact with. We pray, Father, this morning for those of our number who are unable to be here. Father, we know we have a, a, a few that are out sick. We have a few that are, that are homebound and unable to come. We pray for them, Father. We pray that you would continue to comfort them. We pray this, this morning, Father, for those of our number who may be traveling or those that may be working and unable to attend. We also pray this morning, Father, for those who may be spiritually sick this hour. We pray that something may be said or done in their life. They may be able to change the air in their ways and come to your fold, Father. We pray, Father, at this time for Brother Joel. We pray that... As he leads our song service this morning, that we would lift up our voices unto thee, that it would be a sweet savor unto thee. We pray, Father, this morning for, for all of our first responders, all of our military men and women, both here and abroad. We pray, Father, that you would keep them safe and that they would be brought home to their families. We also pray this morning, Father, at this time for for our worship service, we pray that all that is said and done during this worship service is pleasing unto thee. And I also pray, Father, that your will will always be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us, Father, when we fall short. It's in Christ's loving name we pray this morning. Amen. 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 Brother Joe.
saves, I am free from the bondage of sin. Through his suffering on Calvary, all the death of such wonderful love, flowing boundless and full and free, and the death. What immeasurable grace I see. By his blood I am cleansed, I am happy and free. Through his suffering on Calvary, all the As we gather around the table this morning, we partake of the bread which represents Jesus' body and the fruit of the vine which represents the shed blood that was shed upon that cross for each and every one of us. If you would, I'd like to read from Mark 14, verses 22 through 25. And it reads, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed, and broke it, and gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine, until that day I drink it new in the kingdom of God. We'll now have a prayer for bread. Our kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to take of this the bread, which represents the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. May we as Christians to take of this in a manner pleasing unto thee. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Mama. <coughs>
And I will continue in prayer for the fruit of the vine. That's right. And Father, I want to this morning to the fruit of the vine. Take this cup, my sack, and my hospitality. I'm busy. Let's pray. That concludes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is given back to the Lord as we've been blessed. Mm -hmm. If you would, I'd like to read First Corinthians 16 and verse 2. And it reads, Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. We know how to try for offering. Our kind, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We give back a portion of you that you bountifully bless each and every one of us with. We pray, pray as we give back to this time, we we'll give back in a manner that is pleasing in thy sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Two nine four. Two nine four. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone.
kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for his own. I must help Jesus. I must help Jesus. I cannot bear the burdens alone. I must help Jesus. Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tried, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus. Jesus, he all my cares and sorrows will share. I must help Jesus, I must help Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must help Jesus. Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus, and he will help. to 
will be 722. 722. Before our lesson, 516. 516. Convenient, we ask you to stand. <laughs> One day when heaven was filled with his praises. One day when sin was as black as could be. Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin. Dwelt among men.
Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 5. And I am reading from the New American Standard Version. And it reads, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Before I like to start, I'd like to congratulate Carson Maddox, Agrarian Junior Dragster Rookie of the Year. Great first year, takes home the gold. Really proud of it. First Genesis chapter 26 tells us that we are made in the image of God. And I truly, I don't know theologically what that all encompasses. But what it does tell us is that we are like God in some ways. We know that our souls will live forever. We have the will to know right and wrong. We can love or be loved. That we have a God-given power and ability to become all that we want to be. But the truth is that there are less limits to this power and ability than we think. Just think about it for a moment. Look at what we have done as man with the atom. How about our electronic technology since the light bulb was invented? In 1903, the Wright brothers flew the first plane at Kitty Hall. And 66 years later, we put a man on the moon. And now we have spacecraft on Mars. My point is that God has given us amazing power. And when we obey him, when we make him a part of our lives, God promises to come into our lives and to spiritually assist us. We know this by what John writes in John chapter 1 and verses 12 and 13. But to all who believe him, receive him, he gave the right to become children of God who were born, not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And Jesus said in John 10 and verse 10, I have come to give you life and have it abundantly. God has given us the ability to live life above mediocrity, above the ordinary, above the common. As his children, he expects us to rejoice he expects us to live as forgiven, to live as being blessed, content, and victorious. And that's what Paul was saying in Philippians 4 and verse 13, that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And in verse 19, where he says, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Our lesson this morning in a sentence is that all New Testament Christians, regardless of education, of finances, and social status, has a God-given ability and power to become what he or she wants to be. God wants us to be happy. He wants us to be content, and he wants us to live in peace. He does not want us to worry about things, and he also wants us to be spiritually successful. And he has equipped us to do just that. Now, these are not just nice things to say and to think of, but it is the concepts that we find in Philippians chapter 4. In verses 4 through 13. 
But follow along with me, please, in those verses. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, brothers, Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have heard and received and heard of me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that you now at length, you have revived your concern for me, you were indeed concerned for me, but you had no opportunity. Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am in to be content. I know how to be brought low. I know how to abound. And in every and every circumstances, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger and abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And now verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Jesus Christ. These words really sound close to what the Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews 13, verses 20 and 21, where he said, Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with every good thing that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's look at our lives in this very moment. Are we the person that we really want to be? Are we accomplishing things that we want to accomplish? How often do we look in the mirror and tell ourselves that we want to change something? I, I, it doesn't matter. It may be lose some weight. It might be to, to, to quit some habit or, or do more for others or even change negative attitudes. probably all done it at one time or another. Maybe not looking in the rear mirror, but really checking our reflection of ourselves. But if any of these things are for our spiritual betterment, God will help us in those endeavors. You see, we don't serve a mediocre God. Jesus was not a mediocre servant, and his church is not a mediocre church. So why should we be caught up in a mediocre lifestyle? He wants us to have that abundant life. Author and fellow Christian Eddie Clower, he writes, the most important decision we'll ever make in life is how do I become right with God? And then he goes on to say, the saved are blessed abundantly in this life and a reward in heaven. In one of Robert Schuller's books, he wrote that there is basically four types of people. And while there's very little with him that I agree with, these four I agree with. I'd like us to hear these four and see if we're one of them. The first type, he says, is the no-no type. The individuals who are negative about everything. Their response to everything is, I'm against it. It won't work. I had no part of it. It's kind of like the Israelites in Numbers chapter 13 in verses 25 through 29 where the ten spies had returned. 
For the Israelites, it was, no, no, we can't take the land. No, no, the giants are there. There's too many problems to overcome. There's too many mountains to climb. It was their faithless, negative attitude that destined them for 38 more years in the wilderness. Are there any of us here today who are wandering around in life's wilderness because of a lack of faith or a negative thinking? The second is the yo-yo types. These are the ones who are on top of the world one day and down in the dumps in the next. They can't seem to accomplish much because they can't sustain an attitude long enough to get the job done. See, Jesus had 12 men just like that. At the death of Lazarus, they were ready to go to Jerusalem and die for Jesus. In John 11 and verse 16, it was there that Thomas said, let us also go that we may die with him. In that upper room on that fateful night, Peter told Jesus that he would die with Jesus. And when the time came for faithfulness in that garden, three wouldn't even watch and pray with Jesus. In that courtyard, Peter denied Christ three times. At the cross, they stood off at a distance. up one minute and down the next. The same that Jesus spoke of the church at Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3. Then there's the blow blow types. These are the ones who are all talk and no walk. We probably met some like that. There were two in the Bible, Ananias and Sapphira in Acts chapter 5. They were big on talk, but their deeds never seemed to catch up with their tongues. Then finally, the fourth. Those are the special people who make the church go. They dream big. They pray big. They act big. Because with God's help, they are big. D.L. Moody wrote that man has yet to see what God can do with, by, for, and through a man totally committed to Jesus. <clears throat> Which one of these do we fit in? How can we become that person that God wants us to be? Step one, we must have a dream, a vision, or a goal. If we were asked to write down our life's goals, could we do it in two minutes? God was a goal setter and God wrote it down. And Paul speaks of God having an e eternal purpose in Ephesians 3 and verse 11. Where Paul said this was according to the eternal purposes that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. It was God's purpose to send Jesus in order to save mankind. This was his purpose. This was his vision, his goal from the very beginning. Galatians chapter 4 and verse 4 says that when the time was right, God sent his son. But Jesus also had a goal, and it was in Matthew 16, verse 18. And I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. What was Jesus doing? He was working on God's plan to build a church, a way, a mechanism whereby men and women can be saved. Step two that we must break our goals down into manageable parts. 
our problem today is that we leave, live in an instant culture. We try to accomplish all of our goals in too short of a time. And then when we look at the enormity of it, we become overwhelmed and disturbed. Imagine, if you will, that you want to build a house, but you have to clear the trees out. But you're so anxious about it that you've got everything lined up for day one. And there, sitting out along the road, is trucks loaded with building materials. Another truck that's got all the furniture in it. And the cement trucks are waiting out there to pour your driveway and foundation. How well and how long do you think that house is going to be built? Rest assured, by the end of the day, everybody that was sitting in that line is going home and you've got nothing done. Worthwhile goals cannot be accomplished in a day, a week, or even a year. We need to break them down into manageable parts. And that is exactly how Jesus lived his life. When Jesus was in Jerusalem at the age of 12 in Luke chapter 2 and verse 49, he told his parents, Did not, do you not know that I must be about my father's business? Twenty-one years later, Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Twenty-one years. How is this possible? How is it possible to get that message into all the world? Well, the answer is in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Where Jesus said to his disciples, You will be my witness in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and Samaria, and to the end of the world. And it was 29 years later that Paul writes in Colossians 1 and verse 23 that that had all been done. little chunks at a time. And third, we need to seek God's help. Friend, Satan is always there. Satan was in the garden. Satan was there in Noah's generation. He tried to get Abraham, Moses, David, Solomon to abandon their dreams and to live in mediocrity. In the Babylonian captivity, it looked as if God's goals were spoiled forever. At the birth of Jesus, Satan was inherited. Satan couldn't stop God. And we have been promised by God that he will not allow Satan to stop us unless we choose it to be so. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. Paul writes and tells us that there is no temptation that has seized upon us except that is common to man. That God is faithful. He will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we can bear. And when we are tempted, that he will provide a way out. We might not be able to see Satan. But he is here trying to untie our unity. He will give us a thousand and one reasons not to be here on Wednesday night or Sunday morning Bible class. He tries to get us to give up when it gets too tough. He's the one behind us thinking that our efforts are not appreciated. He's behind us when we tell ourselves to let somebody else do it. We can't allow Satan to get us down. And we need to remember that God's delays are not always God's denials. There was an old Indian chief. He was just about at the end of his life and he called his three sons together. And he said, I am going to give my inheritance to the one of you who shows me the greatest amount of promise. 
And he says to them, you see that mountain? He said, I want you to go climb it and bring me back something that shows me how far you went. The first son, he returned with a handful of wildflowers that grew just above the timberline. The second one, he returned with a red stone that he had gotten from an outcropping of rocks close to the summit. When the third one come back, he said, I have nothing to bring in my hands. But in his excitement, he said, but Father, let me tell you what I discovered. Beyond that obstacle, beyond that mountain, there is a whole world you can't believe. Other mountains, fertile valleys, lush forest, or game of balance. I saw the sun rise and I saw the red glow of sunset. And the old chief, he looked at his son and he said, you have shown the greatest promise of all. You have seen the possibilities of life beyond the mountain, beyond the obstacles of life. Many of us are facing mountains. Many of us are probably on a mountain and we don't know how we're going to get over the top of it. <laughs> but the one thing that we need to know and remember always is that there is a life beyond it. And it is ours to claim with God's help and power. Friends, mountains and obstacles always seem smaller when we place them in God's hands. Where do we stand today? What obstacle are you facing today? It is, is it the obstacle of not being a child of God? Because you see, while it doesn't seem like a big deal now, it will be. There will come a day when there are no more opportunities. The door will be closed. And we cannot come back and do it all over. This morning is the opportunity we have. Climb that mountain. Look over and see the other side and you will be pleased. The future is opened up for you and so is everlasting life. For repentance, confession, New Testament, baptism, you can get over that mountain and start a new journey. God wants you to succeed. All of us want to succeed. And with God's help, we can. And if you are a child of God, and you've been facing those mountains and you don't know how to get over and you need help, we want to give you that opportunity to allow us to pray for you and help you over that home. And then he has a need. Won't you come? Together we stand and we sing. <laughs> We have heard the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the tidings all around, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, bear the news to every land, climb the streets and cross the way.
and full and free, highest hills and deepest caves, this our soul of victory, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Thank you, Dennis, for the lesson this morning. Thank you all for being here with us. We encourage you to go back this evening at 6 for our evening worship. At this time, we'll, we'll go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and be dismissed. Thanks to you for everything you bless us with today. Lord, we thank you for the blessings of life we have in our homes and our families, the things that we can find enjoyful. We thank you for our nation of freedom that we have to live in this free, free country. Pray for our leaders that they lead this nation in ways which we do want to accept them on your sight. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this church that meets in this place. We pray your blessings upon the works that we do, that we might be more fruitful Christians. Heavenly Father, we we're thankful for our friends and neighbors. We're thankful for our fellow Christians. We pray for ones who are sick and not well who live with us this morning. We always remember Sue Dills and T. Westmoreland, especially. We pray for them. We pray for Ruth and Rick and Deborah this morning. Deborah recovers from her surgery. We pray for her to do well. We pray to be with Rick and Ruth and Sue. Provide them with things they need as they cope together with us. We pray for a good recovery for Deborah when she returns back home with us. Heavenly Father, we, we we're mindful of the ones who are not with us this morning. We, we, for them, we, uh, we pray for them and their souls that might, might be hearkened. That they might be with us put together to the future. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message we, lesson we heard this morning. We pray and take it into our hearts. We might live better in our Christian lives. We feel our acceptable and tell you. Be better examples to those that we live with every day. We thank our Heavenly Father for the peace that we have in this world, in our lives. We pray for ones who are torn by war and strife today. Be with them and help them handle the things that they're facing with every day. Heavenly Father, we're thankful now that you be with us. We pray you be with us and Watch over and care for us as we go from this place to the other today. And we're thankful for this opportunity to worship you and pray in the strong and loving name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.